There he is. Hi, hi, Hakim. So glad to have you here. Good morning. Good morning, Sujata. Thank you so much for having me. I'm hope I'm. Yes, very clear, loud and clear. Uh, I was just telling all those who have already started joining in that uh, you know what is your background. So just a quick introduction for everybody. Uh, Hakim Udin Habibula has represented India at the Sydney 2000 Olympics uh, as a swimmer. Uh, he is now an engineer turned serial entrepreneur in this field of sports, and he has been active across. uh multiple aspects of sport and particularly swimming for the past 30 years and we are really happy to have you here uh so that we can answer any and every question that our audience may have uh related to swimming uh in fact i yeah i think we'd love to hear some something from you first before i start shooting questions with you well i mean to begin with i think tokyo has been a big uh, it has been a big uh, olympics for indian swimming we've now for the first time uh, seen a couple of indian men swimmers break uh, the a qualifying time for those who are following the olympics or or curious the a qualifying time is you know a very very high level of time uh, to put it in the continental context it's almost equal to winning a medal at the asian games and uh, you know it's a very tough time to do so it's fantastic to see the Indi- two indians uh, breach that barrier Uh, to earn their ticket to the Tokyo Olympic Games, so that's a big starting point. It's the next milestone for Indian swimming, and uh, you know it's a again a very big step from when I used to swim. For us, it was about um, you know just getting to the Olympics. I think now the new generation is now working towards uh, breaching the next set of barriers, and now that they've broken the A barrier, the only thing left is towards uh, the podium now. fantastic that's amazing to hear that indian swimmers are already making progress uh, we do have uh, certain questions which are coming in already uh, someone has just asked that uh, you know at what age did you know that you wanted to pursue swimming as a competitive sport at what age did you start training so to begin with uh, you know my parents uh, did not have any background in sport they did not have any background in swimming so for me it was uh, it was more about introducing me to the water for fun and uh, and more from a water safety perspective that was the starting point and because i was enjoying the water and uh, i used to come back home and eat food eat well without my parents having to chase me and i would sleep well my parents thought uh, the water was uh, working well for me and uh, that's where they you know things uh, started off and uh, i started then learning the technique this was about the age of i mean i was introduced to the water around the age of 5 5 6 for fun and it was only around the age of 7 that i was introduced to a formal um, you know learn to swim where i was learning the techniques of the different strokes right. and uh, and the first competition i swam it was a non medalist event i happened to win a medal and that's a slippery slope because once you win a medal uh for many that becomes uh, you know interesting it started yeah. tickling the interest of my parents and that's where i started uh, swimming more one of few more medals and that's what kept me in the game right but that's so important as a starting point in a child's journey right for them to be comfortable enough with exploring the sport before they realize what their uh, capability is for that particular sport great that's great to hear so it is important to start young that's great uh, another question we have is what is it like uh, being an olympian and representing india uh, what is the pressure what is the excitement like what does it feel like to be there for your country so um the olympics are unlike any other event in the world you know so it's extremely difficult for many people to even imagine what it's like so you put all the world championships in the world together you put all the biggest of uh, say the concerts or uh, mega events any other thing that you can think of together and um, and the olympics is probably bigger than all of that so uh, making it to the olympics is is first of all a dream for many of the athletes around the world and even for us and even for me uh, in the latter half of my journey when i started looking at the olympic games and even thinking that there was a possibility for me to be there uh it is it is first of all daunting and then when you get there it's an unbelievable experience because you're suddenly in the midst of 
the who's who of the world of sport N- not only the current legends but also past legends so the olympics is uh, like a melting pot for the world's best athletes and then it's for the people from around the world the top people from around the world whether you whether it's political or um, otherwise you know everyone wants a piece of the action and everyone wants to be at the games and everyone wants to be in the village so it's a f- unbelievable experience and for so, as an athlete uh you know in the indian context it's still you know the athlete is only recently started getting a lot more support and uh, exposure but back then for me it was uh, an unbelievable experience when you're there at the olympics and the athlete is king everybody is second to the athlete and it's such a different and uplifting experience that is again very hard to describe because uh you know at the games village no one is discriminated based on whether you won a gold or not and every athlete is treated equal and that was a fantastic experience and then of course you know you just um the pressure is uh, more about controlling the distractions because there's so many things happening concurrently mm-hmm. in so many different games there are people winning losing so the adrenaline is is just rushing uh, through everyone and that's what makes you know uh, it difficult for even people who've been to multiple olympics because it happens once in 4 years that uh, you yeah. think that someone has gone before and they know it all but uh, the olympics always has a way of uh, testing people right uh, awesome that's awesome to hear uh, another question which is coming is uh, more relevant to the ongoing tokyo olympics uh, we have sajan prakash uh, participating today uh, in the 100 meter butterfly heat uh what is your uh, you know view on his uh, performance how will, how will he do, how will he do today and what truly what level of performance can be considered as an achievement and accomplishment for indian swimming as a sport so like i said i mean you know we've had uh, sajin and uh, shri hari as two of the swimmers who uh in route to the olympics broke through the a uh, qualification barrier right. and i think that itself you know was the biggest achievement for us in indian swimming uh it is it you know for people who need to understand the nuances it's very difficult for an athlete to peak uh, and especially for a swimmer to peak in less than a month so both of them had peaked to breach that a qualifying time less than a month back and now in tokyo for them uh you know even if they had just come close to their best times that itself which they've both done you know relatively uh, they've come relatively close to their respective best times uh with this pressure environment with this really different environment and i think that itself has been good yes uh, you know in their uh, two other in the previous events if they had reached the semi finals uh that itself would have been a, would have been another milestone yeah. but what i'm going to take away is uh, it's okay you know we are there we know we now have the potential to be in the top 16 of the world at yes. such a big event uh, now as we head towards uh, paris and then uh, you know 2028 in los angeles we will now be like i said looking at the finals and the medals now uh, yes. talking about today's event uh, for pe- for just for the audience to understand uh, sergeant's main event is the 200 meter butterfly and that's what you know that's the air qualifying time in the 100 meter butterfly he's uh, that's not his primary event uh he he had reached the b qualifying in in two other events which included the 100 meter butterfly and the 200 meter freestyle of which he's chosen to swim the 100 meter butterfly and so i think again anything close to his best time um uh, which is not going to get him into the semi finals for sure but even if he comes close to his best time i think will still be very good uh indian swimming needs uh, you know we where we are starting off from uh, i believe we need a lot more encouragement we need a lot more support uh, to be able to expect better in the future do we have the potential to uh, you know uh, challenge the best in the world i believe yes but we need more support right absolutely couldn't agree more uh, another question actually i'm going to club these two together uh, the question that we have is that what are the peak a uh, years for a swimmer and how do you mentally prepare yourself for you know that that one moment of a 30 second or a one minute performance 
uh, between four years of uh, the Olympics. So yeah, that's I've just kind of clubbed two together. So what are your thoughts? So uh, you know the the games, these Tokyo games that have have again been very interesting. You know, and it, um, to just give a context to the the spectrum of age groups represented over here. So for example, girls who made finals and finished fourth in the 400 freestyle is a 14-year-old girl from Canada. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there are uh, a few swimmers who are 37 years old. You have some girls who are 32, 33 years old. So today you have a wide spectrum of participation. You have, but if you want to see where most of them um, kind of uh, peak, you see them in the late teens. So hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21. So between the late teens and then I would say mid 20s. So one of the challenges for Indian swimming is, um, you know, making sure that. Many of the swimmers um, are thinking long term. Are thinking about the game and uh, enjoying the sport uh, much later than where most swimmers today are. Most swimmers today give up the sport when they are twelve, thirteen, fifteen years old. Uh, you know, and and with what we are seeing, I believe uh, you know you have to stay in the game. And while I give an ex- there are exceptions at a younger age, but most of them kind of start getting to the next level only after their uh, late teens. and then into the early 20s so right. it's very important for many to stay and um, and and then look for a long term journey at a very different level right and what kind of uh, what kind of mental preparation uh, conditioning do they really need to get into uh, you know knowing that all of their work and preparation is about that 60 second window when they when they are up and when they are swimming in the pool so i you know um well definitely um you know in the once they are at that level where they are competing uh for the country and are uh, competing at a very high level uh, i do believe yes a certain level of mental support or mental training support can further help but uh, through my own journey i've realized that uh, nothing trains you better than uh, trial by fire you know literally uh, the more you race the more you know confidence you get and the more you race in various high pressure situations that's when you realize uh, you know how to deal with it right so i believe that uh, you know there has to be more high quality high level competition exposure consistently available over many years right something right. that we've been observing in uh, these games as well is that many of the people who are swimming come in with a significant amount of advantage where many of their parents have been competitive right. athletes themselves right and so there is already the uh, you know family support and understanding of what it takes to be at a very high level so these are the subtle things that further help in managing expectations managing um, you know the situation yeah. and then of course it's you at the end of the day you know they, everyone can guide but it's the it's the athlete who then has to internalize exactly. everything and um, then manage themselves in that situation like i said again it's not easy but it's the combination of many things that help them stay uh, stay sane because uh, at that stage the pressure is extremely high and uh, the pers- the difference between the person who wins and the person who doesn't is often just uh, in the person who keeps calm under the stress right right bang on bang on i think that made a lot of sense um, again i'm going to club uh, on the same team uh, how can we groom swimmers young swimmers uh, to eventually achieve that stage where we can compete against the likes of uh, the americans the australians who consistently dominated swimming as an olympic sport and at the same time you know what is it that we need to do to be able to generate those medal winning swimmers from india which is not an overnight job right so it it is going to require a structured concentrated effort so how do we groom our swimmers and what is it going to take for us to get there on the podium next to the pool so i think it's a, you know um it's a long journey what everyone has to understand is that there are different phases of development towards the world class athlete and uh, to begin with it has to be built on a very strong foundation of uh, fun and uh, you know where the fundamentals are strong 
So these are the two things that I would focus on, and that has to be over many years. Uh, competitions to come in only much later. So often I would be the I would probably look at and suggest that you know the swimmers should uh, be enjoying the water and uh, like is uh, learning the right technique and doing that you know for right from say the age of four if not earlier to the age of say twelve or thirteen where they're not thinking about competition they're not thinking about the medals they're just thinking about yeah. you know. whether my whether i'm my technique is improving am i getting stronger because those are the times when the child is developing physically and mentally right and that can actually move on even till the age of 17 and 18 for men yeah. and for and for women earlier and only after that you know do you want to start thinking about competition and adding the competitive element to it because that's when the child yeah. is both mentally physically more well rounded to be yeah. able to start in the load of body okay. uh, you know what what to manage if they commit to a high level training program and this is why uh, it requires patience it requires maturity of understanding uh, that to be an olympian or to to compete at the highest levels you have to um, it's not an overnight journey yeah. it takes many years and like i said earlier you have to be the injury free in your uh, late teens or early 20s to be in a good place uh, to compete right so while that's longer term in terms of the challenge uh, i mean or the journey i would the next thing um, you know i would highlight is we need to start changing our benchmarks so often we are very very happy winning medals at very low levels of competition and um, you know we feel at the age of 15 we have achieved a lot mm. So uh, it happened partly with me at the age of 21 uh, when I celebrated my birthday at the Sydney Olympics. I felt old. I felt old compared to many of the other athletes in India who were youngsters and teenagers who I was swimming alongside. But uh, when I looked around from you know the rest of the world at the age of 21, they're just beginning their journey. Hmm. And, and and it's interesting to then understand that you know we often think we've achieved a lot because we've done a lot at a very low level. and uh, and we need to now start changing the benchmarks which has begun to change but we got to accelerate the change we need okay. if we want to be see us uh, consistently competing with the best in the world then we need to have hundreds of uh, you know sergeants and hundreds of shiharis at this stage right. and and i must give a call out that you know we need desperately need to bring in more women into the sport to start uh, staying in the game uh women swimming has definitely struggled and uh, you know there's a significant attention required to bring them in make them comfortable and help them stay in the game uh for the long journey so uh, i personally believe indian women can be uh, a force to reckon with if they are uh, if there's a certain focus on them fantastic um another very important aspect when it comes to swimming in particular is the need for infrastructure right you you cannot compete at that international level unless you have adequate access to that quality of infrastructure those kind of swimming pools and uh, you know systems that support your performance and tell you what's right what's wrong so again clubbing in a couple of questions here which have come in on infrastructure uh, how do you think swimming infrastructure has evolved in india since your time as an olympian till now and what more do you think we need to do to be able to unearth those swimmers you know give them the feel of what it's like like you said deal with the nerves internalize it more and more competition on that level in that atmosphere to be able to perform on the big stage so uh, infrastructure is one of the most fundamental things on which everything runs right i mean if you want to have uh, a high quality training you want to have high quality um you want to have high quality um, events the infrastructure becomes the most important starting point that being said i think india needs to relook at the way we look at infrastructure and the and the correlation i bring in is um, with the schooling system right the education system so for example uh, everyone you know when they when when they're really young they want to go to a school i mean they want to go to a montessori or a preschool the main point of attention is the accessibility it needs to be close to home so that it's easy on the parent and on the child 
the minute the child wants to go to a school the the parent is okay if the school is maybe a little further away from home but this, the quality of the school is then important because the fundamentals are going to be put in at that stage and when the child is ready to go to university then the university may be in a different city or maybe uh, in a different part of the world uh, because you're then looking at the next level of uh, support that the child would require and i think swimming or sport that way need to be needs to have a similar kind of progression so when you're starting off it's about having safe comfortable uh, hygienic spaces that can allow the introduction to swimming yeah. or to you know, for the fun uh, to begin with it should be fun it should be attractive colorful uh, these are things that are missing today you know when you're looking at attracting children and families to a you know to a space where to engage with water uh, there's very little attention to leisure so it's very important to bring for bring in people of all age groups whether you're a toddler or whether you're a grandparent to enjoy engaging with the water yeah that's a point and that's what is missing and needs critical attention the next phase is that those who then enjoy the water how do you then bring them to learn how to swim so that's the next step we are beginning to make some progress in that part but you know we're missing the first step of the leisure part yeah. and then yeah. once children are beginning to learn and 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 learn the technique appropriately you then provide them again uh, the infrastructure and and the learning process is not a 3 week learn to swim camp mind you right. you know which is a different uh, approach uh, learn to swim is basically uh, something that happens over maybe 8 or 10 years right. where you do it slowly and progressively over many many years and right. then it's like you're ready to go to university that's when you'll end up going to a um, high performance center where you then make sure that the infrastructure is uh, then appropriate for what you're going to be competing in so the, you know the field of play as i would like to call it coming to my own jink uh, and even till today most of the infrastructure when you look at swimming pools are uh, pretty looking water tanks in the ground so uh, you know we swam in pools where i did not know what was going to happen the next day whether i would have access to a pool we swam in pools that were green in color with moss uh, but you know it 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 was it was crazy today part of my work and part of my journey is on changing that you know so we are working today with one of the top uh, leading swimming pool makers in the world an italian company called murtha pools uh that builds the swimming pools for the olympic games the world championships uh we've got some of our installations at tokyo as well and uh today we are beginning to make that difference uh one of the first pools uh we have uh, installed in india is, a, is at the padukone dravid center for sports excellence in bangalore and uh, i'm happy to say today the two olympians uh, out of the three uh have been using that facility in their lead in their training uh, uh, towards uh, tokyo and uh, even sarjan has competed at this pool and the only uh, olympic uh, tokyo olympic trials that was held in 2019 uh, which was the asian age group championships happened in that pool so to give an example that when you create a high quality facility uh, or a field of play as i would like to call it because when it comes to other sports we focus on the field of play making sure that the football pitch or the hockey pitch or the running track is of yeah. world class standard uh, we need to keep that same attention to detail when we are trying to create that environment even for high performance swimming and uh, look at the swimming pool not as a water tank but as a critical field of play where every uh, level of detail needs attention so the change has begun uh, a long way to go you know yeah. <laughs> but like i said coming back infrastructure is very important but infrastructure again alone uh, is is only a critical starting point but subsequently needs to be supported by high quality um, uh, resources when i say uh, human resources and a good quality infrastructure helps in attracting you know good quality human resources yeah. as well yeah absolutely so you know you need uh, you know uh, a different level and mindset of thinking so you create an environment of excellence and today uh, you know the coaching uh, the teaching let me start off with teaching because when i'm been talking about the uh, learn to swim process over many years uh, it actually requires a high teaching approach and we need to ensure the right holistic skills and fundamentals um of swimming and water safety they are then able to then move to the next level when coaches come into play to groom them into the competitive space right so that's the perspective of understanding how the human resources around swimming need to be relooked at and the mindset of excellence needs to come in at the starting point 
where even the teachers should pay attention that you never know who you're dealing with the person you're yeah. dealing with could be a potential uh, michael phelps or yeah. better yeah and uh, and how you relate with that child and how you in- introduce the water to them uh, could uh, make or break that career for them right right uh awesome i think very important to touch upon human resource along with infrastructure you can't look at one without the other so completely they do go hand in hand uh another interesting question is what was the last thing that your coach used to tell you before you took to your race at the olympics well um you know i remember making a call um to my coach my coach was nihar amin uh, who's also you know currently in tokyo with uh, a couple of the, of the swimmers and uh, i remember i was i was the first swimmer from his camp uh, in india that was going to the olympics uh, way back in 2000 so uh, he, i remember calling him because one of the fundamental things that uh, had changed at that point was the swimsuit so i wore the for the first time i had the opportunity to wear a full body swimsuit uh which is now no longer uh, allowed yeah and um, you know i was i was going to be using that for the first time and i remember calling him and saying do i do it and he said do it because the whole approach has been in lead up to it and even there that don't leave any stone unturned give it a shot enjoy the journey and uh, you know absorb the environment you know it was very special for uh, me as well as for my coach because like i said it was uh, i was the first one from his uh, camp that was swimming at the olympics so it was enjoyed yeah, just think, yeah i think the awe of being on that stage versus your own performance i think that's an interesting and an important balance to strike uh, and in that atmosphere what used to be your mantra what used to be that one philosophy that you believed in uh, on that level of the sport what was it that you told yourself every time before you hit the water well uh, um for me it was um i i i i believe that i went through extreme set of challenges and um that only again uh, made me stronger so when i was at the olympics i knew i'd given it all i'd done it all to be there i deserved to be there and um i was quite composed you know because it's not like i had not failed before i'd failed many times before and each of those failures or each of those times of challenges just made me stronger so um i was physically i it worked very very hard to just put perspective for many um through my journey i might have swum at least once around the whole world you know if i take the length wow. of the equator you know That's for approximately 40000 odd kilometers is the kind of distance i put in in the pool um, you know uh, i trained hard over many years both in the water that's the kind of distance and then probably an equivalent distance uh, on land you know in training uh, other things so yeah i it, it was a confidence that you had done a lot you know you had done it all uh, towards and lead up to it i was you know in good shape so so when you know you've done it all um, to be there it's you you're yeah. quite composed to take on the challenge and, and, and i think that's that's where what you mentioned earlier kicks in right that you need to have those competitions and those experiences right in the beginning of your journey through your teens and it's not something that comes right at the end of your preparation it's something which is part of the process and it becomes so important to have these kind of competitions and opportunities to compete and understand your your own capabilities Uh, at an early age and not just wait for the big stage very true uh, another interesting aspect right so things like sports psychology nutrition are only now getting the kind of attention and importance once uh, our athletes are actually understanding what it takes and how powerful these tools can be uh, to actually enhance your performance or bring out the better or the best part of your performance uh so when it comes to something like a nutrition and a diet for a swimmer uh at what age do you think again a budding athlete a budding swimmer needs to look at these aspects look at nutrition as a serious tool in his or her arsenal and actually incorporate it in their preparatory phase or in their way of life so um my perspective is that children till the age of 13 14 need to just enjoy 
playing multiple sports and uh, enjoy eating i um, you know they need to eat of course nutritious food uh eat homemade food and i'm just keeping it as simple as that because um it's easy to get distracted by trying to do too many things too early one of the complaints i often get by many young parents in india is uh you know swimming is a very expensive sport and uh, at a at a young age and and when i try to dig in deeper i realize that uh many parents are spending far too much on the axillary you know elements when it comes to whether it's nutrition whether it comes to strength and conditioning or when it comes to supplements and uh, or or equipment and there's little focus on the fundamentals and on fun so so the whole idea has been to kind of get the attention more on the fundamentals you know and it's it's okay if you're not wearing the most expensive swimsuit when you're 8 years old or 10 years old it's okay if you're not eating supplements when you're 10 or 12 years old it's okay it's about just making sure you're healthy uh, you know uh, and and have a holistic foundation it's only later when you commit to competition and and senior level competition to put it in context that's when i believe you know it then the you can choose to make the investments you know you're in the right direction you know you need to come in and even internationally when i've uh, you know seen many of the top athletes quite closely i've realized that not no not, not uh, as much attention has been paid at a very you know they focus on the fundamentals and uh, they you know this whole um, investment on equipment investment on uh, tech, i mean on uh, nutrition and supplements and uh, all of those uh, come in only after they've committed to high level competition not low level competition so today i have kids who are swimming inter you know inter club meets uh, in you know in some of these uh, bigger cities that are on supplements at the age of 8 or 10 who are like buying the most expensive equipment absolutely not required so my only uh, suggestion would be that yes things make a difference but it needs to come in only at a different stage of the journey and uh, if i have to take a call i would say only after the age of 13 or 14 for a girl and only after the age of maybe 16 or 18 for a male swimmer you know let them let them have otherwise a good foundation overall swimming growing up I, we didn't of course have that much attention i thought i was a non vegetarian uh, you know because uh, i it was funny i i normally have only a vegetarian breakfast i have a vegetarian lunch for most part or maybe some eggs for breakfast uh, yeah, because we're so hungry we eat a larger quantity but uh, otherwise uh, at dinner i would have like a few small pieces of meat on my plate and uh, with me a lot of rice in the center and i would think you know i'm a non vegetarian it was only in the year of the olympics that when i went to the us and got an opportunity to train for a few months and i stayed with um, uh, a bunch of brazilians but i realized that you know i was actually a vegetarian who ate a little bit meat. but uh, you know being a non vegetarian was very different and uh, how they eat uh, in some of the other parts yeah. of the world where the protein is in the center and the carbohydrates are on the sides uh, is very different yeah. so it was very late in my career did i get to understand uh, some of these other nuances but uh, but again i'm not i'm not you know saying that nutrition is not important i'm just saying that it plays a part but only as a second part of the journey not on absolutely. the first part of the journey absolutely um how important do you think is to also uh, how do i put it strengthen our coaches who are involved in those formative years of uh, young swimmers and you know what is it what is the kind of responsibility and role that uh, coaches end up playing in the quality of swimmers that we churn out uh, on the international stage so coaches are the most critical you know after, like i said after infrastructure now that the if you say if the once the infrastructure is there the ones that have to make that infrastructure count or convert the outcomes from that infrastructure are then the teachers and the coaches now focusing on the coaches who have to come in in the competitive pathway it's extremely important for the coaches to uh, and especially the indian coaches to focus on world class benchmarks till today uh or for most part we are still very um uh you know maybe i'm going to hit a controversial note here but i think indian coaches for most part have the biggest egos for the least quality of performances 
So uh, we, you know, we need to set the benchmark differently. I think the coaches today in India have the potential to create world class athletes, but then it's the they have to change those benchmarks. They have to put the benchmark as we want to be working towards an Olympic gold medal and reorient their whole approach. Uh, you know, and how they work with the athlete and communicate with the with the community, uh, you know, that will start changing once they set that benchmark. Right, right. The coaches today have the potential in India. We are very smart. We have the ability, but we need to now change the benchmark because we are very happy otherwise creating national champions. But today we are not right. in America, where a national champion is equal to a world class athlete. So we need to now focus on creating world class athletes and and not ex- not celebrating the the national uh, level medals as we do today. Right, right. Setting uh, up another point, uh, just to add to the uh, the the coach's angle, I would say that there is a point of attention around uh, the you know more coaches coming in or either with science based backgrounds or. you know current coaches building on their science based backgrounds because a sport like swimming uh, is very very science oriented so right. from a technical perspective it becomes very important the stronger this this math and science foundations they better they are able to anticipate and crunch uh, today many of the coaches i i find are gravitating to using uh, apps and tools but i come from a bit more orthodox uh, approach where i believe that if your fundamentals are strong you can do a lot with a pen and paper you yeah. can you only need tools to probably help deal with scale or get or help in calculating things a little faster yeah. but uh, the fundamentals cannot be um, you know the the apps cannot replace uh, the gap in fundamentals right, right. so that's another point which uh, i feel many of the coaches need support to build their science uh, strengthen their scientific foundations and as that improves like i said we've got lots of talent even amongst the coaching staff Absolutely. a lot of young youngsters also beginning to take up coaching and um, indian swimming can bridge the gap really fast um, if we are committing to those exactly. next level of benchmarks yeah uh, i think we've been on for a good amount of time uh, much longer than what we planned for so i'm just going to wind up with one last question which might be pertinent to the times that we are in Uh, with the world just about getting back uh, from the pandemic uh, the last question that i'll put to you is there are many young learners out there willing to pursue a career in swimming will the pe- will the pools open up for them this is from rohani card and uh, i think uh, you know that also resonates with the times that we are in right now so if you can just sum up you know how we can look at opening up pools for people who right now are interested in swimming Well, uh, so swimming is one of the most safest sports so when you're taking about any activity um uh, whether you know uh, amongst any activity whether it's sporting or even beyond i think swimming is one of the safest activities when it comes to the whole covid scenario and globally it has been seen established that you know there've been virtually no incidents of uh, swimming pools being uh, a cause for the spread of covid chlorinated water well chlorinated water has been proved strong uh, disinfectant when it comes to covid so i honestly believe and urge you know various uh, entities whether it is uh, state governments or private clubs uh, to come together and pay attention that swimming pools you know should be opened yes i think simple things like uh, you know maintaining some level of discipline uh, some level of uh, you know social distancing all these things will help uh, further help but s- swimming pools um would help i mean help everyone in the you know not only the elite swimmers while today so even some of the pools that have opened are may opened only for the competitive swimmers but we realize that uh, swimming is good for everybody for health re- health recreation for people's mental and physical well-being uh swimming is a very important activity so i'm one of those that uh, is happy to champion or support anyone that needs help in opening of swimming pools it is a challenge i understand and uh, uh, i would really urge that uh, swimming pools should be prioritized amongst any other thing to be open so that the community can benefit from uh, engaging with water 
superb superb thank you so much hakim i think uh, we've had a super packed uh, 40 minutes since uh, we've been talking about swimming and thank you so much for taking time out uh, and for momentarily transporting us to the olympics through your experiences uh, and sharing your moments with us thanks a lot uh, thank you everyone for joining this insta live with hakimuddin habibullah thank you so much uh, thanks hakim thanks again uh, we thank look forward you. to continuing the conversation on popularizing swimming as a sport in india sure thank you so much i enjoyed thank you thanks a lot see you guys thank you